Joe and I are in West Georgia today, searching for the remains of a Hungarian colony formed here over 120 years ago. This is the story of Budapest, Georgia. The little town of Tallapoosa, Georgia, began as a gold rush mining town during America's gold rush of the mid-1800s. During its boom period, Tallapoosa was heavily promoted in New England newspapers. Enter a man named Ralph Lincoln Spencer, a noted businessman and possible schemer, even his obituary hints to that. Spencer had an idea to establish a planned community for the purpose of making wine. He formed the Georgia Fruit Growing and Winery Association in 1893. He hired a Catholic priest, Father Francis Janicek, to lead the planning of the town and the winemaking operation. It's not clear where Father Janicek was from, but Spencer's offer to him was a nice home with 30 acres, a horse, and a buggy. Father Janicek was able to convince about 50 families to move to this planned community. They were Hungarian immigrant farmers who were working in the coal mines of Pennsylvania. They would establish the town and plant the vineyards. The town was to be named Budapest after their homeland in Hungary. Each family was allotted 10 acres. The farmers were successful. The vineyards grew in abundance. By 1901, everything was great in the Hungarian colony of Budapest. 500 vineyards covered 5,000 acres creating revenues of $100,000. It was successful until 1907, when the Georgia legislature became the first state in the union to pass a statewide ban on the production, transportation, and sale of alcohol. This devastated the town of Budapest, Georgia. The farmers tried to grow other crops, but the soil didn't seem to be suited for anything other than grapes. Many families left the area, not even bothering to sell their homes. Little evidence remains of this once thriving community. The church burned in the 1970s. The simple wooden homes are long gone. All that remains to tell their story is the small cemetery at the end of Budapest Cemetery Road. By Hungarian tradition, all graves lie with their heads toward the east and their beloved homeland.